Okay, so everybody let us know if you can hear us. I'm staying on the screen, so. Yeah. It looks like we're actually live. Yes. I can see us. Oh, fantastic. Okay, well, we, we were uh, trying something um, and, and um, we made a, a little bit of progress, but, um, but didn't quite uh, capture something that was able to change the way that we stream. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep trying. We'll keep trying. Um, there is potential there. I, I, there. There's just, I think, some things that uh, uh, we don't necessarily understand, set, settings we don't understand. But because even the display settings, I don't know that that means a different desktop, and I don't think it does. I know, and uh, it, it's it's a strange thing. We're we're there are a number of ideal situations for how we would like to do this stream. Um, obviously, the most ideal would be we've got like four different cameras. We have p different people operating those cameras, and we have Wait. them dynamically Wait. changing. Why don't I just? FaceTime you from my computer and then mute myself so that way you're not getting any audio input. Yeah, we, we could try that. I mean, it's... Because uh, then you would just have FaceTime as a window like we used to back in the day. Right. Um, let's call that a last resort. Well, I feel like it's a better resort than having to have... True. ...a completely different app open yeah. and completely visible on my screen the whole time, so... Yes, we do. It's not a, actually an air conditioner at this time of year. It's a heater. And yeah, it makes a lot of noise. So um, anyway, so uh, that, that's, that's an, another thing. Obviously, you'd be in a studio. But like, um, we're trying to get it so that at least basically there's a camera that's, now that we know how to shorten them up, there's a camera that's just on me, a camera that's just on Jesse. Um, and we can kind of like make chat bigger and, uh, you know, a little bit. Uh, you, you absolutely have to have a heater in Southern California. It gets below freezing here. That is below 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so you have to have a heater to make sure that it stays above freezing. Otherwise, we would all die of hypothermia. I could go turn it down if it's annoying. Oh, OBS can handle multiple cameras. We don't have multiple cameras, but, well, we do, but one of them is a computer, see? And uh, we want it to get that computer. Hey, Remy. Without having to hook a wire to it. Um, and Danielle is here. Oh, hey, Remy. Wonderful. Yeah. No, go ahead and laugh, Matthias. It's okay. Yeah. But yeah, I do. I I do want to leave that suggestion there that I can you know go, turn the heater, off effectively. I uh, yeah actually I mean we don't really need it right now. It seems to be pretty so. warm or warm enough in that it's seventy one degrees. Uh, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! We can actually. We can, and so that's one of the great things about iOS is that it allows you to use like cameras for other iOS devices that you're logged into. But of course, um, Jessie and her phone are logged into her account. My computer and my phone are logged into my account. So in order for us to use the camera for her computer, we both need to be logged into the same account. Um, also, it the phone camera doesn't help because then we need a way to set it up. So that way it's actually like right here. Yeah, that's, you know? that's less of an issue because of course we have our friend right here. I think I want to show, can I show everybody our friend? Well, yeah, but that's not going to help. Uh, see, I think that the phone could rest in his antlers. Anyway. Um, but then that's further away. Like, I may as well just be using your screen at that point. Yeah, we could set it up. No, I, ideal would be is if just uh, Jesse and I could do our own thing. By the way, I turned the heater off quite some time ago. Oh, no, I know. Our heater, it needs to end. The air conditioner is the same. Once you set it, once you shut it off, it says, like, first it has to go through, whoa, what did you do? I'm here to help you. 
and it needs to process and needs there to accept go. it and go through there the five go. stages of grief and then it shuts off. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I, I mean, he's, he's right. Yeah. Do you want, I want to show off our bowl. Oh, if yeah. We're going to show things off on our table. All right. So uh, we recently had a, a wedding, you know, party reception, and my very good friends, um, uh, the Adlers, whom I've known since well, I would say at least third grade, maybe maybe earlier, uh, they gave us a wedding present where they made us a bowl, and it's pretty neat, right? But then on the inside. It actually says, uh, Jesse and David, Umemon et Zlavi, and then 2000. Zon et Zlavi Zon. Oh, it says Zon. That, that makes a lot more sense than 2012. I love you, and this means forever. Oh, that's so cool. And, then, and so that is in our, the language that we did for Vampire Academy. Um, anyway, so uh, that, that was a really, really cool gift. And we're going to... Fill it with M and M's. We had not decided that. That's a whole lot of M and M's. It'll be clear M and M's so that you can still see the design. <laughs> this was not decided. So not decided. Okay. Um, anyway, so uh, all that is to say, we were we were trying to do some things to kind of like improve the streaming experience. It, it didn't quite work out, but I think that you know we have some options moving forward. We're going to keep trying. We're gonna keep. We're gonna keep trying. Oh my God! We could fill it with Copico. No, that is a good idea. Oh my gosh! And then we wouldn't need the the plastic jar. No, but it does fit there. The other thing is, I mean, that it does wouldn't fit, fit there, which means we would need Copico on cool. the table. All right. So um, anyway, so uh, that's out of the way. Just wanted to let you know what was going on. Also, there was a, a an option where we could stream live straight from OBS, but that didn't work. So anyway. But that's all right. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, we're we're going to figure things out by season seven. Yeah. We will either abandon all plans to change anything about the way we stream, or we will have something figured out. Yeah. See if it, season seven. Be ready. All right. So, um, uh, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> okay. So, uh, next week... Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, first on, on Monday, Jesse and I will be traveling to uh, Paris, where eventually we will be heading to the Netherlands for the In Science Fil Film Festival in Nijmegen. Nijmegen. Well, it depends on which transcription you use. It's less of a I sound and more of a I. Nee. Nee. Neumegen. Is it is it Neu or Nai? What sounds better? Neumegen or Nijmegen? And then for the second part, does Megen or Megen or Megen or what? Which one sounds good? Well, how would you know? Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so um, we're gonna be in the Netherlands during our next stream. So we're not gonna base, we've looked at the schedule. We're not gonna hit our regular stream. Uh, and definitely, okay, good to know. Uh, we're not gonna hit our regular stream on Thursday, uh, but we're going to have a special stream at some time. We don't know exactly what time. At some time on Friday next week, where we're going to be joined by our special friend, hit streamer, you may have heard of him, McCain NL from Twitch. And we're going to be talking games, right? Well, you two are. I'm just going to be sitting there and smiling. <laughs> like Vanna White, but no letters to turn over. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Mateus will be there. And yep. um, It'll be exciting and it'll totally work. Wi-Fi will totally support us streaming as it always does when we travel. Oh, it'll be fine. This was when David said this, my first thing to him was, really, you want to try streaming on the road again? 
And he was like, no, this time it's going to be better because I, I don't know why, but the, this the computer time, is better. This time the, it's com gonna... the computer is better. The computer is the same one we've had last time. No, no, no. This one is slightly better. The one that you complain about all the time that you yes. say is actually much worse. It has different problems, but that isn't one of them. This computer is slightly better, trust me. Anyway, so. Anyway. Yeah. So, so we're going to see how well the streaming actually works on Friday. And if it doesn't, what I have suggested to David as a backup is that we just record it and then attempt to upload it um, as a static video, which, you know, is a backup plan. So we'll, something you'll get something next week at some point. Next week or the week after, there will be something. I want everybody to acknowledge that in the comments, McCain has said that uh, he wishes he could wear his uh, SummerSlam swimsuit, but it will be too cold. Why will it be too cold? Because it's going to be below 70 Wait, degrees does... Fahrenheit. That's why. Ah, game set Wait, match, where? Arias. I Wait. win. Wait. <laughs> There. Okay. Patrick actually said that and Mateus was commenting back. I was like, where did Mateus say this? Um, yeah. Is that the one with the splash cow something something? I, I don't even know what you called it all, but the... Oh, it's just a very common American phrase. Um, anyway, uh, certainly bring your laptop, I think, for reference. I don't think it's going to help our streaming situation, but um, I don't know. We can show what the outside of it looks like. That'll be fun. Anyway. What are we bringing? Sorry. Oh, we're not bringing anything. Oh, I would hope not because we already said we're not checking baggage, which means we need to have 10 days That's right. worth of different styles of clothing we're because fine. we have different dress up and dress down events. Uh, 10 days and carry on. Yeah. So we're bringing the noise. Mateus is bringing the frunk. Okay. All right. Okay. Was that a typo, by the way? Nope. Okay. Going on. <laughs> if there was going to be a typo, it wasn't that one. It would have been the other one, but it wasn't a typo. I was quite clear. All right. Okay. So uh, back to Langtime Studio, language creation. Is that what we do? Um, thing. What do you call this? A streaming. A stream. Oh, yeah. Mateus is going to be, because that's a whole trip. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bring just five days. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, that's right. Uh, Mateus is going to Athens. I've never been to Greece. I've only heard good things. Uh, oh, hang on. Wait. Hang on. What? Oh. We need a title. Mr. Remy has published a book, and we would like to know about this book, Miles. Well, actually, or Remy, Remy's here. I guess Remy can also answer, but yeah. someone answer us. <laughs> <laughs> and and then as soon as we find out what book this is, um, we will move on with poll results. We'll, you, we're, we're you, don't, you don't even need new clothes if you're committed to washing them every day. Not if you want dress up versus dress down clothes. You do need two different sets then. Not if you just travel in a tuxedo. I wouldn't want the dress down to be in a tuxedo. Just wear the pants. Creative translation for real world context. Ooh. All right. And it's a nice. free textbook intro to translation for intermediate students. Well, now this sounds like something that if there's a link, we would like to share the link. Now I I'm, understand. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah. I, I, I understand that you're probably not going to be able to share the link because of the chat settings. Um, but if somehow the link can be gotten to one of our watchers, either us or somebody else who has admin. Go. Um, oh, here's. Oh, that's academia. I need you. Yeah, but sometimes they have. Um, sometimes they have links there. Hey, it's Remy. Oh, my gosh, that is Remy. <gasps> that's a cat. Oh, wait, I don't want to go to that site, though. No, you want to go to the one with the cat. Links. Okay. Here, I'm going to see if uh, somebody's messaged um, on the Discord so that we can. Uh. Yeah, no, it is. There's a picture. Um... Here we go. We got it. Conling Resources. So, can I copy on my phone and paste here? Yeah, because it's your account. Yes. Okay. Wait a minute. BGSU? 
Do you know that I've been to Bowling Green, Remy? And I mean the Bowling Green in Kentucky. I gave a talk there. Okay. But also, Western Kentucky here, um, the alumni interview. That didn't quite work. Is the picture that of Remy worked. with a cat. That worked. Um, so uh, go to the second link, because the first one's going to send you to, to Discord, so ignore that one. The second one there, it's uh, scholarworks.bgsu.edu, and then more stuff will take you to an introductory text about uh, translation. And this is something, of course, that's probably uh, created for real-world translation, but I think it's very, very, very useful for, uh, for language creators. I think um, especially the um, being able to translate anything accurately uh, in a conlang is quite an achievement for a conlanger. Uh, and so uh, rarely will conlangers get to the next step of, well, it's not as if there's just one translation for um, everything uh, from one language to another. Uh, and this is something that's very well known amongst uh, especially literary translators. Um, there, you don't just take a literary work in one language and just translate it verbatim into another language as if there's only one way to do it. There's a lot of art involved in it and Which a lot of choices. Multiple that translations need to be made. of the same work. Yeah. And you can get slightly different readings off of them depending on which one you read. Yeah, and why there are better translations. Um, you know, for example, one of the uh, best translations of Journey to the West is considered um, the Arthur Whaley translation. However, it's uh, highly abridged. Um, Journey to the West is over 2,000 pages long. The Arthur Whaley version is a couple hundred pages. Um, Ooh, a whole chapter on sci-fi fantasy translation where what to do when nice. it doesn't, the words you're translating don't refer. I'm sorry, I interrupted yeah. you. I was excited though. Yeah, so I've, I've read the entire Journey to the West, um, all 2,000 pages of it in four volumes from something called, uh, it was a Chinese company called Foreign Language Press. And I can tell you, I don't uh, speak Chinese. I've never studied it. But you can tell when you're reading it that something is not right. That as you're reading it, you're just not getting all the context. Things seem weird. Things don't make a lot of sense. And, um, and you know, frankly, it's just because the quality of the translation is poor. Uh, but in my case, it was like, well, do I want a really excellent highly abridged translation or do I want, you know, you get what you get, the full thing. And I wanted the full thing um, and that because that's the best that you can get. Um, in terms of like world literature, there is a lot of really fantastic stuff out there that has not been translated into various languages. So if you happen to be really proficient at some language and you really want to investigate translation, there's a lot of richness to be found out there and a lot of things that could be, you know, quote unquote, discovered by other cultures simply by taking the work and translating it both faithfully and artfully. So anyway, um, wonderful that there is this resource that is now free written by our own Remy. So hooray. Um, Yes, and uh, yeah, McCain, by the way, <laughs> Matei says, Foreign Language Press is, was the main press for publishing Chinese communist material abroad. Uh, and I will tell you that this particular translation of Journey to the West begins with an introduction by the translator explaining how there are a lot of counter-revolutionary ideas in Journey to the West, but even so, we still think it's valuable to read this work for blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I knew what I was in for. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Another reason why um, translation is an art form and definitely not neutral. Uh, again, for conlingers, this is something fun to think about as you start to create your own language and think about, you know what, there's not just one translation for anything. Um, anyway, absolutely, Matei's good point, better than not doing it. All right, so um, I'm gonna, uh, we'll, we'll cut the banter part of the stream short. I know that that's going to make a lot of people very, very sad. 
and, and try to get to the conlanging aspect of it um, by going into the poll. So, the poll. This week, we were talking about uh, liaison. So we decided that we were going to have two forms for the noun, nominative and partitive. Everything else was going to be punted to um, articles. Now this partitive, uh, we need to remind ourselves that we still haven't decided on the source. We decided on the form. We didn't decide on the source. Um, and uh, so the source was going to be a very short word, ooh, and then followed by a voiceless L, sh. And we came up with some sound changes that were going to, con you know, govern what was going to happen to L, uh, both voiced and voiceless and so on previously. And so uh, that was last week. This week we were going to decide what's going to happen to that L when it's followed by something that it... Um, closely adheres with. And so this would be an article, a demonstrative, or an adjective. If, hmm. Well, I guess we'll need to really get into the grammar to see if it'll pop up anywhere else. Um, I, if, um, oh, I, I, as a reminder, uh, liaison is something, uh, it's a French term because it's uh, most, um, most well known in French and perhaps first documented in French, uh, where in French um, almost all consonants at the end of the word are dropped. There are certain circumstances where these consonants will reappear when a word where the consonant is dropped is followed by a word beginning with a vowel. And so, um, for example, uh, my parents would be mes parents, right? And there is an S, M-E-S, and the S is dropped. And so it's just mes parents, my parents. And if you were to say my children, for example, you would say mes enfants, uh, where the S is reintroduced as a Z because the next word begins with a vowel. This is called liaison. Um, and it's uh, basically this historical, the reappearance of a historical consonant that has died. Um, and it's only in certain circumstances. You don't always have liaison. For example, if there is a missing consonant at the end of a noun followed by a verb in French, no liaison. doesn't matter if it begins with a vowel. Uh, Oh, right. Um, historically, uh, the George of the Conlangery podcast, also George Corley of Tongues and Runes, which streams every Friday at 1.30. That's tomorrow. Pacific. Pacific. 1.30 Pacific <laughs> tomorrow. Um, so it's not 1.30 where George is. <laughs> yeah. The, the idea of the consonant reappearing is a synchronic analysis. A historical analysis would be that at some point in time in the history of the language, you had, you know, um, you know, may, uh, you had mes, mes parents or something like that. Then the S is dropped at the end of a syllable, and that was that. Uh, however, with mes enfants, uh, the idea is that, well, it was the whole thing was resyllabified. S was now an onset for the following word, and so it is no longer in coda position, and so it doesn't actually disappear in the first place. Anyway. Um, either way, so we're going to decide what happened with us, with our language. Uh, the simplest uh, explanation or the simplest thing to happen is to have no liaison whatsoever, and this is what most languages do. Uh, that is, you know, what the word is the word. Uh, it's, it things happen to the word, and that's it. And so with this one, we had uh, the examples we had. Um, sale is beaver, and bunga? Or bunga. No, it's bunga. Bunga is frog. So the partitive of beaver would be sali. Uh, and the partitive of frog would be bungo. Stress shifting. Very important. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're talking about the leaf beaver. This is where there's a uh, 
some sort of like adjectival modifier. That is a, a noun being used as an adjectival modifier, and it follows the noun. So uh, we have leaf beaver is saligabu, and grass beaver would be saliodas. Nope, saliodas. Yeah. Uh, and one begins with a consonant, one begins with a vowel, nothing changes. It's just word, blah, blah, and we don't worry about it. All right. That was option one. Very simple. We don't have to think about anything. Option two is L liaison. So we know that originally the, the suffix ended with cl, voiceless, uh, L. In between vowels, we have a regular sound change that turns voiceless L and a voiced L uh, in between vowels, if I, I think I already said that. All right, so we say, all right, um, just like in French, uh, if there's a word that follows it that begins with a vowel, we say this is an L in between vowels, and we have it voice, and so there it goes. And so, salut gabou, so salut gabou, leaf beaver, or salut lodas, salut lodas, yes. Stress, word final stress. Sali lodas, grass beaver. And so the L reemerges. Same with bungo uh, gabu and bungo lodas, the L will reemerge. Now, in terms of spelling, when we eventually get there, uh, I think that the L, um, I mean, unless we do something like an alphabet, the L is going to have to pair up with the following word because it should be impossible for a syllable to end u l because it's already heavy anyway but that's something that we need to think about later on all right so this is assuming that this liaison starts at a very old stage h liaison however assumes that things happen a little bit later so we go through the process of regular sound changes the h changes to a h Ha, of course, eventually disappears. However, in between vowels, we say the ha remains. So, salut gabou, salut gabou. The stress is going to kill me. Leaf beaver, salut hodas, is grass beaver. Bungo gabou, leaf frog, and bungo hodas is grass frog. So, it was a question of where, uh, how many sound changes were going to occur before we decided there was liaison. And I think there were arguments for either one. Uh, there was also an argument for just leaving it alone. But as Matthijs noted, A got next to no votes at all. It got Matthijs' vote, right? Yeah. And you know what, Matthijs, it loves you for that. But it lost, and it lost very, very hard. So A is just out of it. So that, leads, that means we're going to have some liaison. It's just a matter of which one. B was L, C was H. And the winner, it was not as close as I would have liked it. The winner is B uh, by a, a minor landslide. Um, I kind of thought H made more sense. Yeah, I was, I was hoping for option C. Yeah. But that's all right. As we all know, Langtime Studio is about compromise. We compromise our values for the entertainment of our viewers. <laughs> but be it is. Um, and be it has to be because I am not watching David eat another onion on screen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or off screen. Sorry, I should make that clear. On or off. Yeah. Um, and I'm so grateful to you for that. <laughs> Jesse, the preparer of our delicious meals, our delicious onion free meals. Um, and so, okay, so it's going to be that now while you were running through the options, I came up yeah. with a whole list of options for the source, what it could mean. Yeah. I've got all sorts of options. Okay. Maybe we can start there. I'm going to, um, move over to Lexergy, uh, collapse that. Jonathan would have helped our case had Jonathan remembered to vote. <laughs> they, uh, did not... Remember, you never know, Jonathan, if you had remembered to vote, what if that would have made someone else remember to vote? Because that's how it works. We're all one big cognitive machine. Uh, believe it, Matthijs. So I've been to the Netherlands before. Well, we both have. Um, 
and I have had a herring uh, with onion. Um, honestly, I found it delightful. Just, uh, I'm a big fan of fish. It was just like a delightful salty fish snack. Have you had the, the herring there? I don't know if I've had it there. I've it's had the it one before. where you hold it up and hump. I mean, I've had it before. I don't know that, that I've had it there. I am not a fan. Really? Yeah. So, just, sorry, Mateus. Sorry if like that fish. was... Um, well, that was one of my many options that I have here, yep. Baba. Yeah, she actually she has it written down here, just so just so you you know believe. Look at that, Jesse wrote it up. I, well done, I Baba. Have, this little section is body parts that it could come from. Hmm. This section is from thinking about them building dams and the the like wood parts that it could come mm -hmm. from. This is from the rest of the dam because other stuff goes into the dam other than yeah. sticks. And so um, I, I've got options for us. Oh, tell me. Do you want to tell Matej about salt licorice? Haven't you already? Oh, yeah. Hasn't this? That was, that, that was in Copenhagen. Was it in Copenhagen or was it in Oruz? No, it was, it was in Oruz. Because uh, we were in that mall that's yes. below ground uh -huh. that has all the, the bird pillars yeah. that I kept taking pictures of and running off so I could get more pictures. Yeah, and I had to run to Joe and the Juice after. All right, go ahead. <laughs> um, well, it, here's the thing. There's salt licorice, and then there's what we had, which was, it was literally called the bone shaker. Yeah. And so it was not regular salt licorice, and I feel like that needs to be made clear before this story is told. Um, what, what are you doing? Sorry. You, you go ahead. The, nope, not that. The salt licorice... Um, that we tried was again called Bone Shaker, and it was a very um, special release for Halloween. Um, so it was something that they did, um, you know, specific for that, the Halloween season. And it was so much salt that it tasted like they had effectively taken the ocean and taken all the water out of it and then gave you all the salt on top of a piece of licorice. Yeah. Um, David's description was that they took a block of salt and then somehow took what water was in the salt block out and then added that dried out salt to the top of the salt block and then emptied a salt shaker on top of that just in case. Um, and so it's like literally could not taste the licorice at that point. Like it was like eating a salt bomb and, um, it was difficult for me and it was gross, but like I held my composure. We were in public. <laughs> David did not hold his composure. <laughs> And um, the lady who gave us the sample of the salt shaker, so, or bone shaker, the bone shaker salt licorice, got full view to David's little, I'm going to call it a dance party because your whole body was shaking. It was literally a bone shaker at this point. David was doing his best not to just spit it out on the floor. Um, and he almost... He almost passed away that day. Um, I think a part of him did. I think it did. It felt like they had taken the part of salt that is salt and turned it into liquid form and then added poison to it and then coated this licorice in that poison. Um, it was extraordinary. Uh, do we have the company, the Dutch company that does it? It was um, Not Dutch, um, Danish. It, I mean, it was just the Lucky. Yeah, um, because like we were actually going to get some so that I could give it to my friends or, or my stepdad, uh, but they didn't. They they only sold it in like massive portions or something. This may be. Yeah, I think that is. Licorice. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's a, it. We found it. They have pink pineapple, baby. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're going to bring some of your favorite, then you're going to try this. Somehow we're going to get it to you. Do they not have it anymore? Well, it was a special Halloween edition. You're right. It's by Bulo. Oh 
Oh my god. There it is. There it is. They call it snowball? No way. Salt and pepper. No, that's But this is so here's the salty. Yeah. And it was I think the level three. Yeah. Okay. Post a link on the Discord so that they can they I can will. see. Well, I'm gonna also look it up by salty and see if Oh my god, I am Remember the law. Okay. <gasps> One is just called salmiak, and that's like in Finnish we keep learning salmiaki. Oh yeah, well that's what that's what salt licorice is called in Finnish, salmiaki. Wow. Okay. Anyway, but that I'm trying to find Carl. You haven't had this one. You haven't. You haven't, you haven't tasted something so salty that it feels like, you know, you have to rip your tongue out. I've had extreme spice, extreme salt, and extreme sweet. I've never had extreme bitter. I think it is ammonium salt. I'm warning, so salty it gives you the chills. I know, but that's yeah. what I pulled it. Skeleton shake. Skeleton shake, that was it. But it's not sold anymore. They don't anymore. sell it anymore. Oh. Probably because too many died. Mm. Here we go. Oh, at least we can... Okay, so I'm going to put yeah. this link in the chat. There we go. And this is Skeleton Shake. So it wasn't Bone Shaker, sorry. It's, it's Skeleton Shake. Carl, I know what you did to pass the time. We're talking about food. <laughs> I made a joke. It was funny. It's up to you how dangerously salty... Saying this is, yeah, so salty it gives you the chill. And here's the image. Oh my God! Where it's just like salt poured on top of. I just wanna show. I mean, there's got to be a better way to do this. But <laughs> well, and oh sorry. gosh, David. Very sorry. Um, and quote from the founder: This product is by far the strongest one we have ever made, and the market has ever seen. Yeah. And that. That's what I had. That is it. And David almost died. <laughs> okay, sorry. That, that took longer than it should have, but it was really difficult to find the, the correct thing since I was calling it something slightly different. Well done. Well done, Patrick. <laughs> Salt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. That was the reason that we didn't get it <laughs> to take it home. It was very expensive. Well, it, just was, an, it was expensive. It was too much. And like they only sold it in these tall ones. If they had sold it in the little yeah. ones, we totally would have bought one because David wanted to punk his whole family essentially. Yeah, but like it's just a it's just a gag. We didn't want like a gallon of it. <laughs> he he effectively wanted to record all of his family trying it so mm -hmm. that way he could then post pictures in family chat of you know look at this even though he totally yeah did the same yep All okay right. so that puzzle has been solved i'll put it in newly tease on our channel for anyone who um wasn't here at this moment i gotta um, grab my notebook david is grabbing David is being one of those wind puppet things that like blow up and woo, that's how he's walking.
<laughs> okay. That is indeed. That it, Patrick, you're right. That's that's just how he rolls on a regular basis. All right. We need to decide if this thing is going to be a verb or a noun. I think it's supposed to be a noun because I think that we're doing like, you know, blank a stick of. And so let's start with leaf. Did did you find out what the SummerSlam outfit was? This is when Patrick first met Matthes. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Um, anyway. You keep working. What are we doing? I'm sorry. I. Bread with butter and raw red onion. What are they talking about? Just why are they doing this to me? No. Like, I. <sighs> I wouldn't eat that either, out of yes. Sorry, that's yeah. I I don't do raw onion, at all. In any form, I only do cooked onions, and I don't do those often anymore because my my dear, sweet, wonderful husband mm -hmm. loves all that is fennel. Oh, and then here's the the brand that Matei gets. I think that, uh, by the way, the sanmyaki, I think that's borrowed. So I don't think it's a native Finnish term. I think it's um, oh, Swedish. Not. Uh, I was just excited to finally fully understand what it was they were talking about on Duolingo. Hmm. Leaf. But, okay, I'm back. I'm back. And <laughs> that's fennel. <laughs> oh, that's the point. I missed the point there, Adi, yes. Good to know. Okay. My hair isn't hand laying right. It needs to grow more of itself to the, yeah, that's it. That's it. Now a little bit the other way. A little bit the other way. Yeah. Sorry, scratching there David's back here. There we go. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's fennel. <laughs> Good job, Adi, yes. <laughs> What are you? So this was the theory behind wh how we were using these cingulative and palcals, like the mm -hmm. tree, a stick of it. But the of part is going to be from this. And so uh, I'm just trying to think what the relationship, what the relationship is between the noun and the word that is going to suffix to it to form the partitive, what that relationship is going to be. I was thinking of a part to a whole kind of relationship. It does make sense. Which is why all my examples went in that direction and I didn't go in the direction of like child or, well, you know. Uh, the, um, the, there's just a question of if, it, if it's going to be a noun or a verb, but um, we're, we're SOV, right? Yes. Yes. One moment. <laughs> oh my goodness, sorry. SOV. Yeah. So uh, we could, it, it could be a verb. Mm. So it could be something like leave, exit, protrude. But the idea is like break. if it were if it were exit or break, right? It would be you know leave. Oh, I'm sorry, tree, and then exit. 
stick. The idea is that it would be the stick that is exiting the tree. Effectively, David is nullifying all but one of my suggestions for a source of a partitive. No, that's that's if we're going to use a verb. That's if we're going to use a verb. Um, the other thing is just to go straight part to whole and say these two things, this thing, and it's kind of an analogy. So it's like tree... Well, it's kind of hard to do that, like tree, leaf, stick, let's say. And... Let's leave the singulative and the palcal aside. <laughs> like, we're, if we want to say the tall beaver, the idea is that we have uh, the single word for beaver is like, you know, sale, and it stands for any of them. Or is it sale? I can't remember. Um, I think it is sale. Uh, in other words, the um, stresses of the end, I think. I think it has to be. Yeah, sale. Okay. So sale stands for one or multiple beavers, just any of them. And then if we want the tall one, the tall one of it, um, the idea is this, we have a beaver, and then maybe the word for tail, indicating a part of it, uh, is a way of metaphorically saying some portion, but not the whole thing of it. And then of that, the tall one. So coming from it. The only thing that stands in the way of this is that ordinarily, if you were to say the tail of the beaver, you would expect tail to come first and beaver to come second. And we are operating with a suffix. On the other hand, it is kind of like a construct situation. So it's like, beaver the tail of, and then of the beaver's tail the tall of. I feel like you're in. As long headspace. As long as Bibleridian is not here to see it, I think that we're fine to just move ahead with tail. Well, that's the thing, uh, Danielle. If we were to say a beaver tail, the order should be reversed because our modifiers are coming second. Um, and that's, that's, that's why we're having this disconnect. Don't you dare, Patrick. I think that's the source. <gasps> oh, salmiaki comes from Latin sal ammoniacum. How about that? An ammonium chloride salt, huh? Wow. That is... Amazing. Incredible. Does it come from Swedish or Dutch? Like who, who? Well, the Swedish didn't have an etymology. The Dutch did. But the Finnish borrowed certainly, it from Swedish. Certainly they would have. So but it ultimately comes from Latin. Wow. That's, that's something. See, the, the joke is that, you know, Bibleridian will only eat, like, you know, vegetables, you know, grown in his garden and, you know, uh, fermented mouse root. But the truth is probably that uh, Bibleridian only eats dry toast. If um, you want to go the route of a verb, I did come up with another list. We've got leave and exit, of course, like to bite because you bite a piece off to break off or to branch off drop because like it falls from something bigger uh take you you take a piece of it or shrink it's the, the smaller part of it i'm gonna do a poll i'm gonna ask what you think makes more sense logically and, and we're david's not going to talk just, about sources and david's just asking hey what do you think yes. not this is what we're gonna do to you there we go Logically, so noun, 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 x, Oh, it was y, so lovely uh, that you were able to be here, Remy, and enjoy the, the end, I guess, yeah. of your spring break. Noun to be, um, yep. 
ya. Well, here, we don't need x and y now. Let's go back to this. OK, I was like, I don't know which is the x and which is the y. x comes before y. Sure. OK. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Do it. All right, and Bibliridian, you're here in time to tell us what the true logic is. Also, we should have coordinated this better, but Bibliridian, we're in the Netherlands next week. Um, and I don't know, Britain is close to that. You have time to hop over to the Netherlands, the 14th through the 17th? Actually, isn't the Netherlands really just a quick swim away from the lighthouse? I mean, just, you know, especially for Bibliridian, who swims every day from for miles and miles. Uh, but of course, what he would do is, of course, since the lighthouse is so tall, he would simply get on his glider and jump from oh, the top of the lighthouse yes. and go and straight just glide there. But the, right over. the question is getting back. Well, uh, that is not our concern. Hmm. We can see the vote totals, but we can't see what Bibliradian voted for. Yeah, we need to have a special bib vote. Oh, well. Bibliridian has vowed to defeat any adult between the ages of 19 and 53 in thumb wrestling. And until he has done so, he is bound. It's just the lighthouse that's that far east, Jake. I know I know your travel would be farther. But yeah, if you can do a hop, skip, and a jump, you know, really big jump to the Netherlands, we'll be there. Hmm. <laughs> Incidentally, regarding... Um, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh! Mm. Regarding um, revisionist literature, uh, I, I, I think I've spoken about this elsewhere, but one of my favorites is this Iron Maiden song, The Flight of Icarus, uh, in which uh, they posit that apparently uh, uh, Daedalus um, uh, hated his son Icarus and tried to trick him by saying that, here, these wings will help you fly out of here. Uh, not me, just you. And so he knows that his son Icarus will fly too high and plans for them to disintegrate in the sun or the, for the wax to melt and so that he dies. And not only that, there's a great crowd to witness, that, witness this. I um, thought that was a very interesting take on the tale. Um, anyway, um, gosh. I don't know. This is the strawiest of poles. Why does he keep doing this? I don't want that. I don't want that. Stop that. Oh, Patrick. Ouch. Mm. Something is amiss. Oh, there we are. Did you kill <laughs> things? Yeah, so there we are. They, 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 they like the idea of the verb. They like the idea of the verb. Um, I'll tell you why I can see that. It's because it would be different from what we're doing with the articles. And the idea is that, okay, um, that's why those are articles and this one's a verb. Or that's why like this one is a suffix and this one is an article um, because they come from different sources. Huh. No, it's fine. It was just, I was very excited about some of my brainstorming that then just is now down the, what do you down mean? the drain. I was very excited by my little noun brainstorms, but the nouns are gone now but you had you had a verb brainstorm i had one yeah it was, one it was still a part of your original brainstorm and i conceived of it as a noun actually as an oh. a bite oh yeah well we, we don't have to adhere to this this is not a binding pole no it's, it's good it, it makes logical sense to go verb and that was where your brain went it was just one of those things where it's like oh man because none of that brainstorming works for any other language we're working on. So it's not like I can be like, ooh, we can use this in another language. It wouldn't make sense. Well, it is a kind of sense, but I like tail as well. Well, then something could be slapped. Mm. Like a tail. That was my tail slap. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Mm. Let me see what else we got. I think we need to put the sound changes back where they normally are. Why is that? 
It's disorienting because it's not like we've changed all the documents. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't feel right. I don't know. <laughs> right, Tethys? Well, we, well, we'll get some good options here, Jake. And, and once I get over my, my initial round of disappointment, we're going to land on a really good verb and I'm going to be happy again. I like bite. Well, that's a verb. I know. So I, there we go. But I like it because you thought of it. Well, I thought of lots of things here, but yeah, but your bite. Well, I want makes you me to so happy. I want you to like it for its own merit, not because I thought of it. No. Because I thought of a lot of things that we're not going to use, and that's okay. That's mm. what I do. That is my job. You know, next time someone asks what if we have jobs that we just split up among us, because we get asked this question a lot. I'm going to be like, yes, I'm the brainstormer, and David is the, the one who has to like pick through the just pile of ideas and find one that actually works. The brainstormer and the barnstormer? I'm trying to figure out if my use of barnstorm fits that. There's only one use, and that's barnstormers and the Iowa barnstormers of the Arena Football League that Kurt Warner played for. Three time yeah, my champions. stomach won't stop making noise. Nobody but, can hear it, right? But that's like yesterday. Um, oh my God. Jake found Bib on Duolingo. I need to find Bib on Duolingo. Bib, you're not my friend on Duolingo. Man. I thought we were closer than that. <laughs> <laughs> See, now this is a backstory I can get behind. In the birds to all the pigs. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's when I was known by the name Pig Baron. <laughs> oh my gosh. What was barnstorming? It's a style of stunt flying. Oh, oh that is a not... just defeated you. What what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. And, and Jake is also saying not like that, so I am going to check Discord now and find out what it is like as David, I think bite is where we go. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> okay, Jake, that's amazing. I put a little, little laughy there. What is that? Because Bab is door. It's Bib. Bib. Okay, so Bibleridian. Jake found you through an example. Um, it's, was that actually, that's Arabic, yeah? Like it's not just another writing system that uses Arabic for a language that's totally different? No, that's how you learn the writing system on Arabic. Okay. Um, and and the example in Arabic is actually Bib. And so that's how Jake found you. You are mm. perhaps not actually active on <laughs> Duolingo. Anybody notice how this almost spells David? I, I do. <laughs> Looks like some bizarre art project spelling it by name. Maybe if I were a Swedish band, this would be my name. Okay, so let's say that is at least one type of biting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is the first type of biting. The fourth type of biting we do not discuss. Let's see. Beaver possum And now the non lore is about biting. And yeah. now we can support another question we get asked a lot. Um, you know, do, does the Chikopsa language have a lot of different words for sand? Because they live in the desert and stuff. Mm-hmm. And and now we can be like, no, but beavers have a lot of words for to bite. Yep. <laughs> I just deleted a whole bunch of stuff. Gosh, I hope you remember what you needed from it. I don't remember enough. Becomes ooh partitive 
Uh, and you know what this means. We've done literally one thing. <laughs> we get a Kobe Co. That's right. Um, now, to be fair, I actually only have like 10 people on Duolingo, and part of that is the the whole friends quest thing kind of stresses me out whenever I'm paired with somebody that I'm like, I'm going to let you down. I, I apologize. Because no matter who you are, I do one lesson a day, and that is what I do. And there are high performers out there on Duolingo who get friends quests like complete 500 things in four days, and I'm like, I do one a day. And so anyway, I apologize to anyone out there, and I further apologize if I don't friend you back just because I don't fully understand what I'm supposed to do on Duolingo friends. And so really, I was just finding a way to let Bibliridian know that, you know, I, I was mm. offended that, you know. You have the unique ability to get stressed out by a lot of things. I do. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Your mom totally gets it. We had this conversation the other night, and I was like, you get it. Oh. But it's like, she actually does a lot more lessons than I do. Yep. But I'm like... I, I get I get my one finish. Oh, I'm missing a chunk. And it's not in there. Mm. Oh, man. Clink. <laughs> Whether whole or in pieces, there's only one way to Copico. I had something clever, but I couldn't think of it at the last minute. Jake, we managed because you did the whole challenge for us. I manage okay when the person just does it in the first two days, and then I'm like, whew, we're done. And that's that's effectively what you do for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So first, I think... Jonathan and Miles understand me. Yeah, we... I knew you would. We, I felt that. We did this. And Jake. So this is... Um, <laughs> Oh, thank you, Logan. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. There we go. Um, you'll see that this is done. So that's nice. Wait. Yeah? Have I missed something? Hmm? Miles? Was this a big announcement? Miles says, my Copico is in honor of my departure from teaching at the end of the year. Wow. Did I... I sometimes miss things on chat when I come back to, say, a Discord chat, and there's 150 messages on red. And so I do apologize if I've missed something. But is this a big thing? Hmm. Your school or teaching? And, and what's what, what are next steps? OK, OK, so this is new information. Oh, I have so many questions for you, Miles, but I will. Remember that we're in the middle of streaming a beaver language process and that you may not be ready to answer a bunch of things in a very large, very large. We have so many, so many viewers, um, public audience, but just know I have all the questions and I hope that all the plans you have for yourself, I am super excited to find out what they are. So I'm just going to do this for right now. Um... We'll see how this is, what's going to end up making sense. Oh, I remember making, Darn it. I remember making that chart and all of the different Val-Val combos we needed to have. Hmm. Ooh, look at David being, oh. being clever. Okay. I think we're ready to move on to our articles. Now, um, these articles, we already know where they're coming from. They are coming from Stick and Bundle. We had this idea. The I, but, um, and that's why this was, this was just postulating. Mm. 
Go on, sorry. Um, Mateus is getting close to... Oh. Hmm. My reactions are, are blacked out, but... Um, that's weird. Mateus, uh, that's amazing, and congratulations. And That looks like an error. You're even on Chrome. Here, I'm going to just press and see what happens. Huh. Oh, wait. I didn't mean to laugh. Maybe. Jesse is laughing at you. There we go. I found a heart, I think. And also there's some... Some little ta-da's. Oh, wait, that may not have been. No, that was the worried face. <laughs> I think I found the ta-da. <laughs> this is also your um, uh, weekly reminder for the uh, the streaming show Let's Have a Booba with Miles and Jake. On Wednesday. Wednesday. That's right. It's a pretty solid lineup, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, mm -hmm. if I do say so myself. Um, anyway, so um, as a reminder, based on the, the results of a recent poll, the idea is that we're going to be having these articles, and these articles are going to merge with at least some of our post positions. Uh, so we need to keep that in mind. Mmm. Oh, that is good news, Danielle. Mm. That is exciting. Mm. This Copico. Mm. It's giving me sustenance. Mm. All right. I'm sorry, babe. I I may have been a bit scattered as I keep reading chat. Um They're too entertaining. And also just too nice and too knowledgeable. We really do have a wonderful set of viewers. We do, and it makes me just want to like spend our two hours sitting and chatting when I guess technically we should be getting something done. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> there's certainly less pressure for this because this is the expansion. We've gotten a lot of the real groundwork done for the main game. Um, and I still haven't settled on exactly what's happening with the uh, the the beaver's main class, which is the engineer. The fox's main class, the gambler, oh, so much fun. It's like, exciting. I just keep on thinking of fun things to add, but um, the beavers are going to build structures that are going to affect the game itself. Um, anyway. And um, they're, Patrick never dialed back, never. They're going to have to have resources in order to make these structures so that it doesn't become too much. So it'll be kind of like the magic users drafting spells with a limited uh, set of resources. Sanya, at the beginning of the game, the beavers are going to have to draft structures that they're going to be able to build throughout the course of the game. Um, anyway, but... Um, so this is a, an area where we're kind of setting the cannons on stage in Act 1. We need to create two articles whose protoforms, at least, will yield interesting results when they are combined with the protoforms of potential post positions. Now that puts us in a familiar situation where we have a lot of moving targets all at once. Um, and that's, that can be a tough position for any conlanger to be in, where it's like, we know that we want this thing to interact with this thing, and both of them are variables. And so then it's like, ah, uh, which, you know, you got to decide on something first to see what's going to be interesting. But then you're concerned that if you decide on one thing here, you may be leaving aside a lot of other interesting choices, as this is your anchor to explore the choices for the other one. It's a tough position, but, you know. Ultimately, you gotta just pin something down. Hmm. <laughs> oh, Bubba, there's exams every week. You just keep getting zeros for not filling them out. <laughs> <laughs> Your grade is so low. I wouldn't want to be you when your report card comes in. <laughs> uh. 
Yeah, that's this is also uh, one of the tougher things. Mateus is talking about making a, a hard and fast decision. And then after you go some ways with it, deciding that you don't actually like the results, and so then you have to go back and change it. This is, uh, I mean, ultimately why, um, you know, a lot of us abandon our first language or our first languages. Because it's like, like that was the case with Meg Davy. It's like once I realized how many mistakes I made, it was like, well, that would need to be undone. That would need to be undone. That would need to be undone. Essentially, I'm going right back to the beginning, at which point it's like, why even bother? Why not just create something new? And even if you did go and undo all of those decisions and then redo it, why would you even call it the same language? Like, is it even the same language? Even if it's a better language, it doesn't matter if it's better or not. Is it the same? Like, does it even make sense to call it the same thing? And, you know, in my mind, it didn't. And so that was why it was like, all right, this is done. That is it. And so on to something new. Anyway. So... Um, this is what I'll say. We have a lot mm -hmm. of potentially interesting combinations when two vowels come next to each other. Uh, but I think I'm going to need a refresher on what happens when two consonants come next to each other. Do we even have that situation? Yeah, no, we do. We have that situation. Yeah. We must. Let's look at um. our sound changes. When a nasal occurs before S or Z, an epithetic stop emerges. Okay. Right, and we have the nasalization. That's hmm, potentially interesting because if it was, if there was an article that were nasalized, then something that followed it with a vowel, suddenly it would denasalize and become a nasal. So, but then we'd be having a lot of nasal vowels because mm -hmm. it would be an article. Yeah. Hmm. But all of those voiceless things get kind of lost or something happens to them at the end of a word. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, but yeah, Mateus, I am. I really like saying I'm kind of stuck with something because I came up with it and then seeing mm -hmm. where it takes me because part of what I enjoy seeing is like, oh, it didn't work for this one form, but what if it's really just that one form that I am not a fan of, but then it works for all these other forms in really interesting ways. Um, because one thing I have to always remind myself is that, you know, like when I'm learning a language, there are always words that I'm like, oh, I don't really like that one as much. And then other words where I'm like, oh my God, that's the coolest sounding word ever. And then a lot where I'm like, yeah, it's just a word, it's nothing big. Um, and it's hard for me to appreciate that same level of diversity in my own languages. And so by being stuck with a decision and me saying, you know what, this is it, I'm going to move forward with it. It really kind of gets me to a place where I can better appreciate that not all forms are going to be fantastic. But I also then like to create a lot of different languages because of that, because then I get to keep seeing what different forms would do. Happen to this? Um, yeah, let me pop over to Lexergy real quick. Lexergy created by, uh, of course, um, Graham Hill, otherwise known as Memer. Uh, I want to try something. Uh, and now we need a voiceless nasal. Let's put it in a different. See what happens. Okay. Now let's see. Um, okay. We we so we we allow geminates. We allow geminates. I did. I didn't remember that. I guess we do allow geminates. I I vaguely remember that. Okay. Um. No wait. Let's keep it on the switch over here. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I don't know if necessarily we want to end up with geminates in 
a combination article and no. Was that the right answer? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> all right, I, I can... Mm. We're not doing clitics. Oh, so we end up getting Geminids when things change. Okay, from the... So I, really what you're asking is, should it end in a nasal? Because that's the biggest way... Well, maybe. But uh, okay. um, what I'm thinking about is maybe we don't have one that's CV and one that's VC. Maybe they're both VC. The thing is, we... Hmm. We don't want to end up with CBCV because then you might as well just not have the compound. But then it feels a little... It, not on the nose. It feels a little convenient if both of our articles were CV. First, that's less con less convenient. It's like, okay, that's perfectly fine. I can see why that would happen. All right, both the articles are CV. And then all of the post positions are VC. That seems a little convenient. Too convenient? Yeah. I, I guess we don't have to have... I, I'd say... Well, you know what? Let's... let's, let's I want to ask... Um, I want to ask our viewers, uh, and I'm going to, so in order to honor our portmanteau poll result, how many um, article plus post position portmanteau do we need? Darn it. How about just take out the in order to honor our poll? How about an order on our poll? So, um, I'm just saying the in order is, is redundant. Um, and this is just like a, a feeling, just a feeling. Like, you know, we wanted to have these articles combined with the postpositions, just like a, le in French becomes o. How many do you think that we need to have for us to say, you know what, we did it. We did what we said what we're, we're going to do. At least two. Oof. Hmm. I'm going to actually click on that. I'm curious to see. It really was, in this case, it really was just a straw poll. Uh, um, and I hope people would vote honestly. Um, to, you know, the, get the type of thing where it's like, if you're going to say this is a thing about that language and you go to that language, how many things are you expecting, you know?
Okay. Well, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Um, of course, some people are going to want more, but it looks like as long as we have yeah. two or three is actually going to be okay. Um, Let's say at least three. Yeah, I think three is a, a good one to aim for. And, and it also, it honors it. If they get used often enough, then quite frankly, mm -hmm. you don't need a whole lot. If it gets used often enough, suddenly it's like this is a feature of the language just because it shows up so much. Yeah. Um, but I, I think three with making sure one is something that's more frequent um, out of those three to not only fortify the system, but also to really like show up. Um, because sometimes you can get these, you can get five different ones, or you can get 20 of them in a language, but they only show up in really limited situations, which then begs the question of how long would they historically stick around if they're not used that often. But also, it's like, it's kind of like the, uh, the verbal derivations we have in Tpahla. We forgot about them, so we never actually used them. Yeah. Let's take a look at this chart right here because um, essentially we're, we're taking two rows here. Which mm -hmm. rows do you think are the most different? This could actually be another poll. Uh, what do you mean by most different? I, I don't actually know. Uh, I, I, I'm actually going to do this this way. Um, Choose your two favorite rows, A plus I, A plus U, I plus U, and is that it? Or am I missing oh, one? Oh, because there, I see what's happening. I was like, isn't that a cell, not a row? But you're saying the full A row, the full I row, mm -hmm. the full A row, and the full U row. Yeah, that's so it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was reading it as like A plus I, so that I. <laughs> and let me, um, let me, uh, um, in fact, you know what? Here, let's, let's do it this way. Um, this will make it a little bit easier, actually. Um, blue. We'll stick with gray. Yeah, blue, gray, and white. There we go. Um, so A, blue, plus I, gray. A, blue, plus U, white. I, gray, plus U, white. So uh, what we're doing here is we're, as we're designing our articles, they're going to be CV. And so the Vs are going to be different. One of them is going to be one vowel. One of them is going to be the other. And so now the question is, is it going to be on E, on U, or E and U? Because um, they'll combine with other vowels, and these will be the results. For the A row, it's gonna, we're going to have a long A, A, or O. For the I row, A, long E, and U. For the U row, a, uh, U, uh, and a long U. I like Jonathan's suggestion. Oh, John, both of Jonathan's suggestions were good. <laughs> that, Jonathan, you're absolutely right. Which one to eliminate? But too late, too late. Yeah. But also I really like the red, green, and blue, and then the poll options are yellow, magenta, and cyan. <laughs> Uh, oh, bye, Bubba. Have a good dinner. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it feels like we've got... This is where I was leading as well. A pretty clear winner. Or it's where I was leaning as well. All right, I'm going to end that. Okay, let's uh, let's do it. Um, 
uh, we had a clear preference of uh, blue and gray. I'm going to um, delete that or, or undo that so that it's just the same color now. So we're going to have uh, two CV articles. One's going to be A, one's going to be E. Um, and uh, let's see, do we have any sound changes? Did you just, I think you just mixed and matches ro romanization and IPA there. One's A and one's E. No. Oh my gosh, I did. So A ah and E or A and I, <laughs> but, but you did one of each. <laughs> and this is also why. One is a low, unrounded central vowel. Yeah. This is seriously like the amount of times when David is saying, well, the form should be this. And I have to clarify so many times because I'm like, what vowel are you talking about? Are you talking about the E that makes the sound A? Or are you talking about the E that is written as an I? This, and this is the fault of those punk British teenagers that affected the great vowel shift. It's if, all their fault. If we would have just stuck to some standard A, A, E, O, U in English, this would not be an issue. Yeah. Whew. Uh, All right. Okay. So um, uh, I wanted to see, are there any sound changes where a uh, vowel will change the quality of a preceding consonant? I don't think that there are. In this language, I don't remember that. Not to say that it doesn't happen. Oh, yeah. Um, this before round vowels. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. That is actually potentially interesting because it would only happen in combinations where an O is produced. Magpie is, is here, and so that's very exciting. And of course, if we're going to use pure vowels from here on out, Magpie is saying hello to <laughs> us. Oh, speaking of Halo, streams on or uh, airs on Thursdays. Oh man, this means I'm two episodes behind. I need to get that dialogue up. Um, and Carl was here at some point. I don't know if Carl is still here, that's but that's right, Carl Buck, with whom I created the Sangheili language for uh, Halo, Halo, which would of course be pronounced Halo. In <laughs> well, in our language, it would be Halo. Halo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. Um, so uh, this is potentially interesting, this sound change, because the only time it would occur uh, for either of these is when the following um, postposition began with a U, resulting in a rounded O or a rounded E, which would cause the sound change. Uh, this becomes that, and that becomes that before round vowels. So something with F or V in the proto form. Ultimately, this would become H, uh, but this one would stay W. Is Miles referring to the song? Hey, Miles. That, is that you, Angel? You got, now you got, you know, yeah. Vrai sa pleche da numa numae. Yes, there we go. Mm. <laughs> and, and there's one where they say, Jesse. That Jesse? Yeah, you got to listen to it. Jesse's name is in there. <laughs> Except when you see the lyrics spelled out. Not it, even close. <laughs> you would never guess. But when he, he clearly says my name. Dude. Jesse. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was perfect. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. Now. All right. So. Um, oh, and that song is the reason... Because I had never heard that song until Just Dance. Oh, yeah. And David had it on a playlist, and I said, oh, it's because I introduced it to you on Just Dance. And he was like, no, I also knew it from, like, the early internet memes. And I said, I yeah. don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so then David pulled up this video that apparently made the rounds in, what year was it, 2004? Yeah, something like that, super early. Okay. So he's like, well, you know, this is what I was referring to. And I was like, I, I've never seen this before. And David was shocked. And he's like, where were you in 2004? So anyway, that sparked the discussion that led to him finding out that I did not actually get internet in my apartment until my second year of grad school and partway through my second year of grad school. And he was like, how did you even exist? And I was like, I went to the library or I went to campus and did stuff. And he was just like, I, this is not computing, um, literally. And then that's how I, 
he also then discovered that I was did not always have a computer. And so in my undergraduate years, I actually would write out my essays and papers longhand on paper and take them to the computer lab to type. And so I had to do sessions, like reserve sessions in the computer lab um, to make sure that I could type my paper. And so that, that was, we, that song sparked that discussion and David <laughs> discovered all, all of that about me. Um, I hope the uh, older folks watching will recognize typing on a typewriter with a return carriage and then also taking the paper out and putting on the white out and then carefully. <laughs> I, I joke, of course, by then we had white out tape. My God, that stuff was amazing. <laughs> Didn't have to let it dry. You just and done. Mm. Oh, oh. Mm. Uh, anyway, um, I have used a typewriter. So uh, what do you like better? Um, a pre uh, There we go. Arias put it. Mm. That's where my name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chesit. Yeah. Um, so uh, what do you like the idea of better? A portmanteau that goes from an article starting with V to an article starting to a portmanteau starting with W, or an article starting with F to a portmanteau starting with H? Well, do we want more wo and woo, or do we want more... You know what? We're just we're just gonna go nuts with the polls. <laughs> All right. So imagine that we had an article that was this. And it would uh, become that, unless it, there was a portmanteau with O, in which case it would become that. Or um, we could have this, which would become this or that. Um, and then, of course, uh, if it went the other way, uh, it would be um, phi becoming phi or Q, and then V becoming V or V. Okay, so I'm glad you typed those out. So now I can, so it would either be Fa, Ho, Va, Wo, mm -hmm. Fi, He, V, V. Well, can I? Yeah. Can I take the Va and the He? <laughs> I let you get away with. Um, oh yeah, no, it's uh, it's Romania's like biggest uh, modern contribution to music, I think, um, and a truly positive one. What a song! Mm. All right, looks like we're looks like we're getting. Oh wow, there's a lot of votes. <laughs> We, we somehow picked up some extra viewers? Yeah. Oh, no, we actually have more viewers now. Dang. David, you cut it off. We could have gotten more more votes. Yeah. But yeah. it would not have changed the results. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's the thing, Arias. She didn't even know about the meme. It's just a great song, man. I, um, yeah, I just, I knew the song from Just Dance. Yeah. And so. Don't you worry um, about the things that we gamers did in the early 2000s. It doesn't affect you. It's gone. Those days are dust. What do you like better, Jess? Okay. So FH1. Yeah. And right now we're deciding, now we know that it's one of these two. This is what it would look like when reduced. Is that, can you tell me? what exactly am 
Uh, we only get one option out of these two. Yes, we only get one option out of these two because this would be this would be the article, and then the only time that you would see these is if it were a portmanteau with something else. So, like, say that there was some sort of, I don't know, like um, something like that. You know, then um, what you'd have is uh, F A plus um, U K would be hook like that. Okay. Um, and then same thing with this. Um, just uh, let's delete that. And then that would become the hook brings you big. <laughs> Heek, hook, Fa-da-da-da-ma. hook, and mm -hmm. I think I'm leaning towards fa and hook. Got it. Done. Now the next question: What article is it going to be? Does fa feel like a stick or a bundle to bundle. you? Bundle. Really? That was a strong and quick decision. Um, but then it's backwards, though. We wanted VC. Oh, no, no. We're doing CV for both of them. Oh, OK, we, OK, OK. We decided. Right, right, Yeah. right. All right, so then bundle. So this is going to be Palcol article. Uh, modern. I believe, right? Because it, it only becomes H. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Goodness. I had the little yawns. Um, also, just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. um, and I know we, we have another form to decide here for stick. Um, uh, incidentally, we can make this for uh, for the like the idea of bundleness that it could be big, because remember that when we have the VVV. Um, this thing gets reduced. Anyway. And then, of course, yeah. as an article, it will just get reduced. So this, I think, will make things a little easier. Stick can be CV. Yeah. I like it. All right. Um, but it, it's 22 minutes out to the end of stream. Yep. And so I was just thinking um, about poll and moving forward. I know we need to decide a form for stick, but like, mm -hmm. were there areas that kind of naturally suggested themselves for a Patreon moving forward I, I did have an idea um, and uh, we could um, yeah I did have an idea and that was um, deciding it would be a theoretical poll so we wouldn't be working with um, forms yet mm -hmm. but we would be working with ideas that is what are we going to tag with post positions what are we going to handle with word order Okay. And then also, like, maybe even what are the composition of those post positions? Are we going to have, uh, like, a smaller set with compounds or a larger set? Okay. Um, and just see what, what people are feeling. Like having, okay. like, uh, in this language, a bunch of different post positions, kind of like Japanese, a smaller set with compounds, a little bit more like English and German. Mm -hmm. um, and then... In terms of um, uh, direct object and indirect object, uh, working with things like, you know, are we going to tag direct objects? Hi, mailman. Um, or are we going to leave them untagged? And if we are, are we also going to just rely on word order for indirect objects? And then we have the ordering, because um, there are lots of possibilities there. Um, there are interesting marking strategies where like you only mark a direct object if there's an indirect object present uh, and also where like the ordering of the indirect and direct object is fixed when they're both present mm -hmm. so anyway um i was thinking a poll like that what do you think okay is that i like that yeah okay and then we can spend the rest of our time uh, yeah i just wanted to make sure we had discussed something because article. otherwise mm -hmm. yeah um, oh, anime fan. Oh, no. Oh. Don't Ooh. worry. Don't Ooh. worry about that. Oh, we momentarily had a beach ball. Mm. Um, oh, see, it showed up on screen. They saw it, too. 
Um, I will say I do appreciate that Apple makes the beach balls so so pretty. Yeah. Um, because it's like in that moment of frustration when you're just watching the beach ball spin, it's like, well, at least it's a fun rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's the sound the beach ball makes. Is that, is it really? Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna just. I'm just. Smile and nod at you. I, I am, I am set adrift on like Euro dance vibes right now. I need that. You need? I need. Euro dance vibes. Yeah. In your life right now. Yeah. You. Look, Sometime in the early... You're not really what I would call a person who feels moved by dancing. Sometime in the early 90s, uh, Western Europe discovered using the synthesizer for techno, and they were like, the party starts now and it will never end. And that's where we are today. Endless party. There you go. Yeah. Um, I... I just, I'm sorry, my brain is refusing to figure out how, how to deal with that. Uh, <laughs> but, but, um, what happened to our dental teeth? Did they just become? They become a th and the. They did not go to the alveolar. No. Okay. But we also have a proto th and the. Yes. Um, the dental teas do go to alveolar after a nasal. Okay, okay. So they do sometimes, just not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we sure did, Jake. Okay, so question. How would you feel about the form of stick being something like tea with that dental tea? Mm -hmm. Because then if it comes after a root that ends in a nasal, it would end up becoming TI something with the portmanteau of sometimes T something else. Because we had chosen the two rows, right? Because we wanted those as our um, our stick and it's it is a bundle. It is a counter it is a counter feeding environment. Um, that change would never happen because um, the article would be coming before the postposition. It would not be coming after a noun. It would be coming after a noun, but we, when we decided that these things were going to be articles and not clitics, they would end up standing away from the noun, and so they're not going to interact with the final consonant of the noun. Yeah, if there is one. Now that would have been like an a number one thing to do had the vote gone for clitics, which would have been cool, but you voted for portmanteau. Hey, you know what I'm also going to do here? <laughs> I, I don't want us to forget that that was actually bundle. Oh, thank you. That was that was an accident here. I'll, I'll actually, I'm going to put this um, there. Well, in that case, um, um, uh, how do you feel about then just like, um, T or D meaning stick. I was only choosing this one because it could go either direction. Um, mm. And we had choose we we had chosen we chosen mm -hmm. um, the A uh and the E rows because we wanted to use those vowels, right? Yeah, D would be a little screwy, wouldn't it? Oh, it's the. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Z would be funny too. Z. Um, well, I also like ki. I like. <laughs> we have then we'd really have our kiki or bundle, huh? We would. Oh my gosh. And, but it would only be ki and or ki. Yeah. Um, I like it. That could be. Yeah, because fa will become ho in some situations. Ki would end up becoming ki, ki. in some situations. Yeah. I, I, that's what I'm going for. All right.
There it is decided. <laughs> it is the straightest stream on the internet. I think that we all know that. <laughs> um, I guess that's just commentary on us and not commentary on the people who participate in chat because <laughs> <laughs> I, I otherwise think that would not necessarily... You're right, Jake. <laughs> this is why. This is why Let's Have a Booba was born. Indeed. I think the labels are all temporary anyway. Everything can change. All right. Okay. Yeah. So now that we've kind of decided on things, we've got like thirteen minutes to. <sighs> Because, you know, we don't want to go too far. Um, well, uh, you know what we could do, since we're separating out, we could speculate on forms for some of our um, post positions. Yeah. When I saw that <laughs> Sorry, I'm paying attention. I'm, I am now just laughing as we, we go through chat. Um, but yes, yes. Let's. <laughs> then it, well then Jake it's a question of yeah what what Google knows versus what it thinks it knows versus what it asked you to fill out years ago versus what is easily changeable etc cetera, etc cetera. um especially since sometimes the options were not very good if you filled if you created your Google account years ago sometimes the the options have since shifted and are better in some cases than they used to be I've never even looked at our gender data from YouTube. Oh, it's overwhelmingly male. Um, um, though not as overwhelmingly male as my own channel. And so that, uh, like, where was it? Is it, yeah, Magpie saying YouTube's gender data is wild, and I think they assume everyone is male by default. I, I would guess that that's probably true. Yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> oh, speaking of Star Trek, um, interesting. Um, speaking of Star Trek, though, just saw the episode like two days ago. Mm -hmm. um, third generation, I should specify. Star Trek third generation. Um, just saw the episode. Uh, you you meant the next generation. Next generation. I was, I was so close. Yeah. The next you, generation. You really were. It would have been the second iteration, unless you count the animated series. Anyway, go ahead. But anyway, um, next generation. Just watched uh, the episode where um, there is a group that. Uh, they meet and they work with, and I can't remember their name. What are they called? What are their? The Janai. The Janai, thank you. Because on the screen it was, I kept thinking Janai. Um, but anyway, um, where they, by choice, are, are genderless by society. Um, but it was a really interesting episode because just thinking about 
Well, one, it was interesting from a modern point of view because Riker at one point has a discussion with one of the Janai and is like, well, what pronoun do I use? We in English only have he or she. What do I do? <laughs> and David and I are just kind of laughing like they have forgotten everything they have learned in the last 400 years. But at the time that the episode aired and was written, there would not yet have been the yeah, larger discussion known. of what to do um, for more gender neutral pronouns. And so anyway, it was just it was really, really interesting to see it from the it was a discussion being started. And um, it, it was just another reminder of how progressive Star Trek could be in, in some situations. Um, given the fact that this was airing so long ago. And I don't know, it was, I thought it was really neat. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It is, you know, third generation, next generation. I, I am so bad with titles. I'm really, I do my best. If we, um, if we tried to work with a nasalized vowel, it would be impossible. We would end up with some, with one nasalized vowel we currently don't have. Uh, no matter which vowel we chose. If we chose ah, then we'd end up with nasalized e, so it's a ga, which we don't have. If we chose u, we would end up with two of them, nasalized on and nasalized n. And if we chose E, we would end up with nasalized eh, again, which we don't have the E. Hmm. Oh, oh, Jesse, I did see I got an email. I have not yet uh, been able to respond to it yet. And I have that on my radar to do this weekend before we leave the country. So that way I don't forget. And so we'll get there and... Patrick is saying, um, I thought it, is it Frakes or Franks? Frakes. Frakes. Jonathan Frakes wanted the Shania he makes out with to be played by a man, but the producers nixed the gayness. Oh, of course. Yeah. Wow. Um, anyway. They were trying, you know. They they tried to push the envelope a lot as far as their understanding at the time, you know, early 90s. Of, of what the envelope was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. David, can you rephrase your question? Um, and by rephrase, I mean just repeat it. <laughs> because I promise, I promise I'm going to listen fully this time. I'm so sorry. Hold on a sec. I wanted to see which episode Parallels was. Oh, Jonathan. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that uh, that was a uh, okay. Anyway, um, uh, we can't if we or if we're gonna have a merger with a nasal vowel, mm -hmm. no matter what vowel we choose, we would end up with a nasal vowel that is not currently in our inventory. Whoop. We only allow the major vowels to be nasalized. So, and we're saying because these would emerge at some point. Either, the... either E, O, or U would end up no matter which vowel you chose mm -hmm. um, for that potential postposition. Mm -hmm. Now, we can just say that it just pushes to one of the ones we already have and do it if we want to have a nasal vowel. But I just wanted us to be aware of that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm leaning away from it, but at the same time, I could understand having it and then saying it went to the nearest available nasal vowel. Yeah. Um, it, it was just uh, for our portmanteau, having having it go from both of them being non-nasal vowel to one of them being a nasal vowel, it would make it quite distinct. So it, it would, it's like it would lend itself to being like, oh, that's why you did portmanteau to kind of illustrate mm -hmm. some of these differences. So I think I'm just going to write down some options here. I'm um, going to get rid of this because it's no longer relevant. And so if we did um, like, oh, and that needs to be um, 
like it doesn't matter what it is like it just needs to be voiceless because um, any of these will turn into a nasalization if it's this then we're gonna have um, um, can which would become that and then we would also have that okay um, if we did this and we can't do you because then we end up with two that are different right right if we did this then we end up with that and then which would be uh, um, sorry So, okay, so one of the two forms would... Yeah, because okay. if we did U, then we'd end up with two that we couldn't do, on and U. Mm. And, and so they would both need a change. Uh, and that seems like a bit more far-fetched. But just in case, just in case, I'm going to write out what the result would be. Sure. This would be... Um, okay, and so Miles, I think... I see now that you've answered your own questions, but yeah, these post positions and articles will end up getting smashed together. Yeah, um, these don't have meanings or, or proto forms or anything like that. These are just test forms so that when we eventually do this, we see if we like it. I gotta say, um, Normo says in Italy, a kiss between two men in a TV series got censored in the scene as like one of the guests like covered Basically, I guess maybe raise their hat or something to just cover their faces. Uh -huh. um, it, it it surprises me because I, as an American, I tend to have the the stereotype that European minds are much more open than ours, mm. um, and so it's always a little bit like let downy to find out that it's like, oh, <laughs> I, I want the world to be so much more progressive than it is. <laughs> Usually what it is is they are much more open to showing female nudity, and that's ah, like the extent of it. That's true. And so they look at us and say, oh, why are you so backward and close-minded? And literally that's, that's it. That's the only, <laughs> it's the only difference. The only difference is the, the nudity, yeah. But only for women. Only for women. Yep. Right. Uh, All yeah. right. Um, okay, so that's, that's that. Uh, let's see some other... I'm I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah. Oh, this would become that. I really want our world to be a much better place than it is. Mm. But the O could not be nasalized there. Are you saying that's if we allowed the O? Sorry. Um, okay. It, it, it would be um, that. Okay, now let's let's just explore some other options. How up to date are these sound changes? Not up to date. Graham, if you're watching this, I beg you. <laughs> but also like I absolutely beg you. Please. I, I, I do have it pulled up where we can make some changes. Um and we should at some point, and by we, I mean me. I should, because I want to be our appointed helper outer. <laughs> this is that that is classic me as I'm trying to do too many things at once. I'm trying to change the world and make sure David stays on top of the nasalization. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so let me go back to our sound change and see what ends up happening to the Go to H. Okay, that's just the partitive. Between voice sounds. Um. <laughs> oh, already yes. Gonna bring back the the gram. End of syllables and words. Oh, 
Oh yeah, Rigas, you listen, you you did it when you needed to last week, but yeah, don't don't get yourself like banned from the Google spaces because you've tried to change your name too often. That that would not be good. Okay. Code H is lost, resulting in lengthening of the previous vowel. Okay, okay, okay. So then um do we allow long o no we don't okay so we only allow, okay 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 hold on let's do um let's see what happens with this um oh and, and normo congratulations um on your upcoming it's unfortunate that it's going to be civil union rather than marriage but um that doesn't make me any less happy for you and your partner yeah Big congratulations. So this is going to become. And it's going to become this. Or hmm. is it? Is it? Is it? Nice. Where's the H lost? Oh, yes. Let me see if I can find the heart. I think the heart was at the top. Yes. Ooh, there we go. Woo! I can react with all sorts of hearts. So um, I'm going to do a screenshot of what I'm seeing as I try to react. I don't think I can put a picture in chat, but like my whole react bar is just a big blank spot. And so that's why I, I was... I remembered the heart was at the top, so I was able to press it, but otherwise I, I may have reacted in an unfortunate way. Ooh, less than two months. Yay! I think that's what minus two months means. So this is just gonna be kind of the same thing. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, no, I can't add a, a picture. Whoop, did not mean to do that. All right. But now let's see what happens if we do one of them. Interesting. Okay. Just to take a look at if we did this. So I just chose two different vowels. This one is, so ooh is not shared with either. And then this is just a stand-in for what happens if it shares a vowel with the previous. If it does, uh, 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 if it, I'm sorry, if it doesn't share a vowel with the previous, we end up with two short vowels that are opposite rounding. Qui, fo, which of course becomes fo. Um, mm -hmm. If we do one that um, does share, we end up with a short vowel here, gay, but a long vowel here, fa. Mm -hmm. And if we did the opposite, it would be the opposite. We would have a long key. I'll just do that out just so that we can see it. So we end up with a triple length, which just shortens to that, which would be key. And then in this case, this, 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 okay. Kind of interesting. Okay, so um, we're past it at this point. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, good for next time when we have a regular stream. We can kind of look at this. We at least have some brainstorming to get us going. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Yes, and next week will be different because we will be in the Netherlands. And so um, just keep that in mind. We will, though, again, try to have something um, for you, hopefully yeah. live, probably on Friday rather than Thursday. And with much more Matez than there is usually. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited. Matisse. All Matisse. right. We keep saying Matez. Should it be Matez?
Well, we can get a lesson. That'll be the first lesson we there get. There we go. Is the proper pronunciation of that diphthong. We'll that get it right. We both pronounce in different ways every time. Um, all right. And so until then, stay grammar, jewelry hells, all that good stuff, and much love to you all.